The USA is a great place to look for wildlife. Whether you're looking for large mammals, reptiles or birds, the US has it all. But if you look hard enough, you can also find some animals that seem to be in the wrong place. Because of things such as zoos and the pet trade, plenty of non-native animals now call the USA home. Surprisingly, not all of these species are found in Florida, and I'll be going through just a few of them today, as I'll be going through five animals that shouldn't be in the USA. And for our first species, we'll be heading over to Sub-Saharan Africa, as we have the warthog. These wild pigs are full of personality and are often found in areas of grassland and savannah. In these areas, their diet is mostly plant-based, but they will also eat insects and worms, but occasionally they will scavenge carcasses, but this is usually when other food is scarce. Although these animals are related to wild boars, they are very different to them. They do tend to be a little smaller, and compared to wild boars, they have a lot less hair. This is mainly due down to the unforgiving climate of sub-Saharan Africa, but some of these hogs have impressive manes. You may notice that some large warthogs have tusks, but these are actually elongated teeth. These can be used to defend against predators, but they also come in very handy when digging. Warthogs are very impressive diggers, and at night they tend to hide underground in dens. The warts that give the warthog its name aren't actually warts at all. Instead, these bumps are made of cartilage, and can be located near the eyes, the snout, and on the lower jaw. This is actually a good way to sex the warthog, as in general, males have more of these warts than females. Although these warthogs can look very fearsome, they are much more likely to run than to fight. They can reach speeds of up to 30 miles per hour, and will often and fancy themselves in a race against most predators. Although it may seem surprising, as well as living in sub-Saharan Africa, these warthogs can also be found in South Texas. It's thought that these animals were first kept in private collections, but then went on to escape. It's unknown when they first escaped, but they were first spotted from a helicopter in 2014. As they're such great diggers, it was easy for them to escape, and now they have a self-sustaining population. These hogs can have a negative effect on the Texas ecosystem, as they can both compete with the native species, and also cause damage to property and crops. Because of this, they are not protected by Texas game laws, and anyone is able to hunt them. So although these creatures are very interesting mammals, they have been causing problems in South Texas. But for our next species, we can head to the Middle East, South and and Southeast Asia, as we have the grey-headed swamp hen. Now this very interesting bird was once considered to be a subspecies of the purple swamp hen, but was elevated to a full species status in 2015. They are a relatively large water bird, with males averaging around one kilo in weight. Of course, they are very striking and colourful, and are very well adapted to their environment. They tend to inhabit marshy vegetated waters, where it can be seen very clumsily looking for food. In most cases, this food comes in the form of reeds and floating vegetation, which there is much of in their natural habitat. To help them get around in these areas, these birds have very long legs and very long toes. This helps them to spread their weight out on aquatic plants and makes it a lot easier for them to get around. These adaptations can also make them very bad flyers, and their landings are more like controlled crashes. Even though these birds have a very large distribution as it is, in recent years they have been expanding this distribution, and today they can be found in lovely Florida. These birds were introduced into North America in the late 1990s, and this is mostly from escaping from private collections. Most of these escapes were in the Pembroke Pines area, and at first, wildlife biologists attempted to eradicate these birds. This proved to be harder than expected, and their numbers soon multiplied. They can now be found in many areas of southern Florida, and in many areas it is an established member of the ecosystem. It was added to the American Birding Association checklist in February 2013, and it doesn't look like it will be going anywhere anytime soon. So this bird is now just one of many non-native species in the Everglades. But for our next species, we'll be heading to South West Africa, as we have the Gemsbok. Now this animal also sometimes goes by the name of South African Oryx, because this is one of the main places where it can be found. It is in the Oryx genus, and one of its main strongholds is the Kalahari Desert. It is depicted on the coat of arms of Namibia, and in this country it has a population of around 373,000. In one town in Namibia, these animals are much loved, and can be seen wandering freely around the streets, and taking advantage of the vegetation that grows there. These animals have a few adaptations that help them survive in their harsh conditions conditions, such as a low metabolism which means that they don't have to take on much water, and long horns that can be up to 1.2 meters long, which help defend themselves from predators. These horns aren't just for show, as it's important to know that Gemspot can take down lions. One of the things that these animals like more than anything else in the world are desert melons. These melons are full of moisture, and help these animals get through tough times of drought. Although the adults of this species have a very striking coloration, the young are a lot more bland. This is to help them blend in with grasses in their natural habitat, 
and to keep them hidden from predators. But as well as this, there is one very rare colour morph known as the Golden Oryx, and these animals are known for their more muted appearance. But as well as being found in Southwest Africa, these large mammals can also be found in New Mexico. These animals weren't escapees, as they were actually introduced by the New Mexico State Department of Game and Fish. 93 were released from 1969 to 1977, and the current population is thought to be around 3,000 specimens. These animals have thrived with the lack of predators, as the predators in New Mexico are only able to take down their calves. Because of this, their population could soon grow out of control, but their numbers are mostly managed by regulated hunting. So I think it's very fair to say that these animals are happier in New Mexico than they are in Southwest Africa. But for our next species, we'll be heading to Central America, as we have the brown basilisk. Now I'm sure to many of you out there, the basilisk is a creature in Harry Potter, but as well as being a reptile in the movies, it is also a reptile in real life. Basilisks are a group of lizards, which are mostly known for their crazy hairdos. The brown basilisk is one of the more common species, and tend to be found near water sources. This lizard's coloration helps it blend in with its environment, and keeps it hidden from predators. But as well as this coloration, it also has another trick up its sleeve. In some areas, this lizard is known as the Jesus lizard, as it's famously able to walk on water. They are unable to do this for very long, but it is a great way to get away from predators. This lizard's size and its strange appearance have made it a very popular pet, and this is why they're found in the USA today. Because of their need for a tropical climate, today these lizards are restricted to Florida. It first arrived here in 1976, and the wild population were thought to be escaped pets. Their populations seem to be on the rise, and today they can be found in 10 counties, where they are regularly seen along canal banks. So even though they're very interesting lizards, they are just one of the many animals that don't belong in Florida. But for our next species, we'll be heading to South America, as we have the blue and yellow macaw. Now this bird is obviously a member of the large group of neotropical parrots known as macaws, and tend to inhabit areas of tropical forests. Of course, these birds are very popular in aviculture, mostly due down to their striking colour and ability to talk. In the wild, their diet mainly consists of fruits and vegetable matter, but they also eat large amounts of clay on exposed riverbanks. This may seem like a very strange thing to do, but this clay acts as a mineral supplement. These birds are often seen in pairs, but can sometimes form flocks of up to 30 birds. These macaws, like many other parrots, have very strange beaks. These are actually very well adapted for their lifestyle, and are great for crushing seeds and opening nuts. As I've already touched on, these birds are very popular in the pet trade, but they are a lot more work than many people may think. Because they are so intelligent, they need a lot of attention, and often get depressed if they're left alone. In many ways, if you buy this animal, it's a pet for life, as they can outlast some humans living up to 70 years old. This is why some people argue that they shouldn't be kept as pets, and it's quite clear to see why. The pet trade is why they can be found in the USA today, and unsurprisingly, yet again, they are found in Florida. There's been a wild population here since the mid-1980s, but this population is very small. These parrots are much loved by the local people, but unfortunately they may not be here for much longer. Because they demand such a high price in the pet trade, many poachers are going after these macaws. Because there is no legal protection for non-native birds, there's little that the local people can do. Some towns have adopted bird sanctuary laws to protect them, so there may yet be a future for these birds in Florida. So out of all the non-native species in Florida, these parrots may be one of the most popular. If you know of any other creatures that can make it on this list, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.